Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat in which we will discuss deductions and losses for and from adjusted gross income known as AGI. The first thing we want to understand is there's no difference from a tax perspective between deductions and losses. In what sense? In a sense that they both reduce income, which is good. In taxes, we like deductions. We like losses. Why? Because from a tax perspective, as your losses and your deduction goes up, your tax bill goes down. So they do help in reducing your tax bill. Therefore, knowing the deductions and losses, whether they are for AGI or from AGI, is an important concept in taxation because adjusted gross income determines many other credits, deductions, and your taxable income overall. So here are some general rules you want to be aware of. Deduction for AGI, also known as deduction above the line or deduction above the line. What, what is that line? We're going to see what that line is. We're going to specifically talk about those deductions. But if you see it or if you heard about deductions for AGI is above the line. So there's a line. There's a line. And that line is adjusted, adjusted gross income. Any deduction that is above that line, it's called for AGI. And we need to know what those deductions are. We're going to look at them separately. Then we have deductions from AGI, deductions from AGI, deductions that takes place below the line from AGI. So that's why it's called for and from AGI. Where is this imaginary line coming from? We're going to look at the tax form. It's on the tax form itself. So we're going to look at the line and look at the deductions that are for AGI, look at the deductions that are from AGI and understand how it works. Again, AGI is important because it determines many other determination of your credits, deductions, and taxable income. So let's go ahead and get started and let's look at more specific details. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Deduction for and from AGI. Well, there are two broad, broad categories, deductions for AGI. Remember, what's for AGI? If this is adjusted gross income, this is for AGI. They're above the line. And we can have two broad categories. What are those two broad categories? Any profit motive deductions, like business expense on Schedule C, for example, or Schedule E. Now, bear in mind, we have to have a profit motive. We cannot have a hobby. We're going to be discussing hobby in a separate session. So as long as you have a legitimate business, legitimate means it's a Schedule C business, not a hobby. And you are incurring deductions. And there are many, many deductions, which we're going to see on Schedule C. Or if you have a rental property, Schedule E. Or you have, if you are a partner in a partnership, you have a Form 1065 or 1120S. We're going to look at all of those shortly. So business deductions, think of them as you have a business, you are involved in a business, whether that business is a sole proprietorship, partnership, or an S corporation, you're going to have many business deductions, and those deductions comes for AGI. I'm going to show it to you physically how it comes above AGI. Now, bear in mind, business deduction has to be ordinary, necessary, and reasonable. Now, because those three terms are important, because for a business expense, for a business deduction to be deductible, it has to be ordinary, necessary, and reasonable. I'm going to have a separate recording for this. But the point is, it's a business expense, business deduction. In addition to the business deduction, so this is category one. Category two is adjustments. And we're going to have a list of those adjustments, which I will show you. Again, I will show you the list on the form itself. Then guess what? We're going to have a separate recording for each list on that adjustment each item on that list, a separate recording for, for example, student loan deduction. We're going to have a, a separate recording for educator expense, so on and so forth. We're going to look at those adjustments in a moment. Then we have the deduction from AGI. What are the deductions from AGI? Those are below the line. Simply put, those are allowable personal deductions. And simply put, we are discussing here Schedule A, which I will show you Schedule A as well. So this way you can see what everything fits. So this is the big picture. Now we're going to look at the details on the next slide. 
Now, you want to make your life easier on the CPA exam and your accounting course, you want to know the difference between for AGI and from AGI. I'm going to first take a look at Form 1040. And specifically, I'm going to be highlighting the adjusted gross income line, which happens to be for this particular year. Okay, that, that could change, the location could change, happen to be line 11. So you see here line 11, this is the line that we are discussing. Any deduction that goes above the line, any deduction that's above the line, those are, those are, let me put it in a different red, those are for AGI, and any deduction that goes below that line from AGI. Okay, now, we're going to look at what are those deductions in a moment, but I just want to show you the line that we are looking at. Now, in a, in a separate year, this could be a se separate line. It doesn't have to be line 11, but you want to look for adjusted gross income. So, so what could be above the line deduction? Above the line deduction. Let's take a look at some, some issues. Let's, let me draw the line one more time. Above the line. So let's take a look here. For example, here we have line 8. It says other income from schedule 1 line 10 so we need to go to schedule 1 line 10 to see what type of deduction we can have well let's take a look at this this is schedule 1 and this is line 10 what goes under line 10 so let's take a look if we look a little bit closer business income attach schedule C it means what's going to happen is this first you are going to Complete your Schedule C, and this is Schedule C business income. You're going to list your income, your revenues, then you're going to list your deductions. So any deductions that takes place here, such as advertising, car and truck expense, depletion, depreciation, interest, uh, interest basically business interest, legal and professional services, office expense, uh, travel and meals, those are business deductions. Any business deductions, they're going to be listed here they're going to be listed on schedule c then from schedule c they're going to be transferred to schedule one and from schedule one they're going to be transferred to line eight so simply put business deductions notice here business deductions are absorbed in this line that's why they are for agi that's why they are for agi so business deduction i'm going to choose another one Rental real estate. If you have a rental real estate, you have to prepare Schedule E. When you prepare Schedule E, you're going to have revenues, but you're going to have also expenses, deductions. And this is a list of all the deductions. So any rental deduction, any business rental deduction, advertising, cleaning and maintenance, commissions, insurance, repairs, supplies, utilities, taxes, those are business deductions. Again, you're going to take those deductions here. Then they're going to be transferred. They're going to be part of this rental real estate. Then they're going to be part of line 10. Then they are transferred to line 8. Again, rental expenses are for AGI, business related. Okay. Now, we can keep on going. We can talk about partnership. We can talk about S-corporation. The same concept apply. What does that mean? It means first they are deducted. They are deducted on. They are deducted. Those, exp those deductions are deducted here. They are business related. Think of a partnership. Partnership is no more than what? No more than a sole proprietorship, but multiple sole, pro sole proprietorship. Same concept. They get deducted here. Then they get transferred to Schedule 1. Then they get transferred to 1040. Same concept with 1120S. We have many de business deductions. Here you are operating as an S corporation. You have business deduction. And... You will transfer those to Schedule 1. So basically, we cover the first categories for deductions for AGI. Any profit motive, any profit motive that you are undertaking and you incur business expenses, whether it's a Schedule C, Schedule E, uh, you know, you're, you're operating as a partnership or an, S, or an S corporation, those are for AGI. Then you have what we call adjustments. Let's take a look at the adjustments first on Schedule on schedule uh, on form 1040 so notice here there is a line that says line 10 here it says adjustment to income schedule one okay line 26 so if we go to schedule one and on 
uh, let me go go to schedule one if we go to schedule one this is schedule one page two and on schedule one page two they're saying add up all the adjustments and take that deduction what are those adjustments again we're gonna we're gonna select there's a lot of them we're gonna select few and we're gonna cover in details for the CPA exam for your accounting course you, you can't cover everything for example educator expense certain business expenses of re reservist health savings account deduction move an expense for members of the armed forces deductible part of the self-employment tax penalty on early withdrawal uh, student loan interest deduction IRA deduction I'm just you know giving you a list giving you a list so all these deductions you add them up and whatever the total equal to notice here if we go back to to form 1040 they are deducted right here on line 10 line 10 becomes before line 11 so in addition to the business expenses we have those adjustments so now we know what goes for AGI for AGI two broad categories as I mentioned business deductions all sorts of business deduction and adjustments a list of adjustments that they are that the IRS the government allows you to deduct now now we're done with four from AGI the only thing we're gonna see from AGI for now is the itemized deduction we're gonna look at qualified business deduction and a separate recording but we're gonna, we're gonna be discussing here itemized deduction what is itemized deduction well when you file your taxes you have two options you can take the standard deduction notice here it says standard or itemized deduction the standard deduction is based on your filing status so if you're filing single for this particular year the standard deduction is 12,950 so you can take the standard deduction or you can take your itemized deductions what are your itemized deductions well itemized deductions are from AGI just like the standard deduction from AGI so itemized deductions are listed on form schedule a so if you go to form schedule a you have medical and dental expenses taxes you paid state and local uh, taxes state and local personal property interest you paid home mortgage interest and points home mortgage interest not reported on form 1098 gifts to charities casualty theft and losses and other itemized deductions so what you do is you fill out if you have those deduction you fill out this schedule a and when you fill out this schedule a you're going to get a total as a single you would again we're gonna have separate recording for each one of these sections you're gonna have a total for this section so when you go back you go back and you would say well my the government gives me 12,950 when I add up all my itemized deduction I'm getting eighteen thousand five hundred and ten dollars which deduction would you would like you will take the schedule a deduction because it's higher than the standard deduction that's given to you as a single individual then you will take the itemized deduction but those are from AGI not for AGI now knowing the difference between for and from AGI is important now which deduction do taxpayers prefer so if the taxpayer is can have two deductions which one they should prefer they should prefer for AGI why why for AGI because when you have a deduction for AGI like a business deduction or an adjustment you don't have to bunch all your deductions together if you have a deduction for AGI you will take it you will take it on your business such as schedule C or schedule E or you will take it as a as an adjustment however deductions from AGI may not be used why because for AGI from AGI deduction to work you have to bunch them you have to add them all because they by themselves they're not good enough and the total has to be greater than your standard deduction whatever it happens to be that's the only way you can use a deduction if it's from AGI therefore deductions for AGI are more beneficial because they reduce your income without competing with any other figures so if you have them you can use them so the difference between deductions for AGI and from AGI is an important topic extremely important some of the CPA exam questions or some of your exam questions basically they want you to know the difference between for and from let me just if I want to summarize this for AGI are your business expenses whatever business you are undertaken in which form and adjustments that's is given a list of adjustments it says both of them they're basically looking at schedule one so look at schedule one then from AGI you're looking at schedule a personal deductions it's, if I want to summarize this in a nutshell, what should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures, work MCQs, true false questions. That's going to solidify your knowledge about this topic. What I'm going to do next, because 
When you have a business deduction, it has to be ordinary, necessary, and reasonable. So I have to explain what does it mean to be ordinary, necessary, and reasonable. Because you cannot take any business expense. Because sometimes you may have a hobby, not a business. So it has to be a business and the expense that you are incurring, ordinary, necessary, and reasonable. Good luck. Study hard. And of course, stay safe.